Turin Diocesan Museum offers a fascinating journey through various epochs, their works of art, values and proposals that have overlapped throughout the history of the diocese and the city. We are in the area of Turin's cathedral. The cathedral was built beginning in 1491, according to Renaissance architectural canons upon the will of Cardinal Domenico della Rovere and based on a project by Tuscan architect Amadeo di Settignano. The museum is set in the romantic framework of the cathedral's lower church, which according to Cardinal della Rovere's instructions was to be a mausoleum, destined to host the mortal remains of important personalities. The upper and lower churches were to replace the pre-existing medieval churches. In fact, the construction of the cathedral implied the demolition of the three ancient basilicas. The remains of these three medieval churches, perfectly aligned with each other, were encompassed in the lower church. The excavations at the entrance of the museum show the remains of the Basilica of Santa Maria, built in the 6th century over the ruins of Roman buildings. The course of the museum follows the principal paths of the Christian faith. The first area introduces the theme of access into Christian life, which historically reached its apex with the sacraments of Holy Baptism, Confirmation and Eucharist, conferred in a single ceremony by the bishop. The lintel symbolically represents the theme of the passage to a new life, together with the remains of the doorpost of one of the cathedral's side doors, demolished during renovation works carried out in the 17th and 18th centuries, concurrent with the building of the Chapel of the Holy Shroud. Visible in the center of the lintel is the coat of arms of Cardinal della Rovere. Lelio Scaffa, a 17th century artist from Saluzzo, painted the imposing canvas reproducing Jesus the Maestro. Its iconography is unusual. Jesus is on a dais similar to a bishop's throne. His apostles and some of the faithful listen and discuss his words. The background of the painting is also of interest. It shows the interior of the cathedral before the interventions for the building of the Chapel of the Holy Shroud. The use of the baptismal font dates back to the 7th century, when it replaced the ancient habit of the immersion of believers in rivers or in baptistry tubs. This baptismal font comes from the cathedral and dates to the end of the 15th century. Made in white marble, it is decorated with vegetable elements and on its external edge by a twisted rope motif. On the supporting column, the Della Rovere family coat of arms appears. The bishop is the minister par excellence for holy baptism. Here is a collection of some of the symbols of this function. The mitre, in the shape of a triangle, made of embroidered polychrome silk adorned with precious stones. The ring represents the bond between the bishop and the church. The crozier, or pastoral staff, recalls the bishop's concern for the worshippers entrusted to him. The painting depicts Saint Francesco of Sales, Bishop of Geneva and Doctor of the Church. Domenico della Rovere's escutcheon is made of foresto stone and dates to the 15th century. On exhibit in this air-conditioned room are five paintings that originally adorned the cathedral. In the center, a baptism of Christ, attributed to Martino Spanzotti and dated 1509 to 1510. It is remarkable for the elegance of the clothes and the delicate depiction of nature described with limpid clarity. On the sides hang an early 16th century genealogy of the Virgin by Gandolfino da Roretto. A late Gothic style Saint Nicola di Bari by Girolamo Giovinone, dated 1508. A late 15th century Madonna with Child and Saint Anne, attributed to Antoine de Luny. A holy family with Saint Anne and Saint Catherine of Alexandria of the Bologna school, with influences by Raphael and Giulio Romano, embellished by a 17th century frame made by Pietro Botto, who also decorated many of the royal palace's rooms. On the left, at the end of the transept, the remains of the church dedicated to the Saviour can be seen, 
This was the oldest of the three medieval churches in Turin. Along the entire perimeter of the lower church is a well-constructed system of 16th century tombs. On the right of the Church of the Saviour, visible under the glass floor, are the only remains of Turin's primitive Christian baptistry. The area devoted to the Eucharist, at the heart of Christian dogma, is divided into two sections that recall the most significant moments of the Holy Mass. Following the liturgical reform introduced by the Second Vatican Council, the Ambo gained importance and significance as the place devoted to the Liturgy of the Word. The marble Ambo was sculpted in 1998 by Milanese artist Guido Lodigiani. The marriage at Cana was painted by Giovanni Angelo Dolce, active in Piedmont during the second half of the 16th century. Attentive care was paid to the details of the wedding banquet and to the food, which allude to the Passion of Christ. The marriage at Cana is an episode known for the miraculous conversion of water into wine, a foreshadowing of the religious transformation of wine into blood, Christ's miracle during the Last Supper. Next to the Ambo is a valuable lectern, made in the workshop of one of the most famous 18th century cabinet makers, Pietro Pifetti. And a missal, published in Antwerp in 1701 with the insipid of the Roman canon. In the principal room devoted to the Eucharist is an altar rebuilt according to the canons introduced by the Council of Trent. Placed in the center of the presbytery, the altar was made up of a table on which the various religious articles were to be laid. Vestments are on display in front of the altar. These are splendid works of embroidery made of spun spiral and lamellate gold, sequins and studs, and polychrome silk on silver laminated ivory silk. On the rear of the showcase of the altar are further examples of liturgical vestments with a wide range of fabrics, colors, and shapes. Above the altar cover is a late 16th century carved wood depicting the Eternal Father. In the middle of the room devoted to the Eucharist, a monumental crucifix stands out, flanked by the figures of the Holy Virgin and Mary Magdalene, made in carved and polychrome wood, the work of various artists of the mid-17th century. At the sides of the crucifix are the imposing statues of St. Peter and St. Paul, sculpted in lacquered wood during the second half of the 17th century, a work by artists from the Lugano School. The two valuable sculptures that stand under the side arches are the work of Francesco Ladate, a sculptor of the Savoy Court. They represent St. James and Christ at the Column. With the liturgical reform introduced by the Second Vatican Council, the altar assumed new significance and form. It is a fixed, quadrangular altar table facing the congregation that encouraged their participation in the ceremony. This Carrara marble altar was sculpted by Guido Lodigiani for the Turin Cathedral and on its front it depicts the biblical episode of the Supper at Emmaus. In the central showcase, several examples of ostensories can be admired, used during benedictions and processions to display the Holy Host to the congregation. This collection encompasses ostensories dating from the 17th to the 19th century. The side showcases contain liturgical items, real masterpieces of the art of the goldsmith, such as reliquaries, altar cards, ostensories, and candelabras manufactured by Piedmont artists between the 17th and the 19th centuries. An ornamental cover for the altar, dating to the mid-18th century, in cast chiseled silver, depicts the episode of the Miracle of Turin. Other showcases display valuable specimens of liturgical goldsmith mastery, such as censers, goblets and reliquaries. The collection is enriched by a series of gilded silver and brass goblets that testify to the mastery of Piedmont and Lombard goldsmiths active during the 17th and 18th centuries. 
Some goblets manufactured between the 19th and the 20th century by French master goldsmiths Brunet and Callias are also on display. Behind the showcase, containing the series of ostensories, is the tabernacle or Eucharist custodian, probably having belonged to the ancient medieval cathedral. Manufactured in Carrara marble, it is the work of an unknown Piedmont sculptor. On its edge, in tiny, elegant Gothic characters is written, This is the house of God and the door to heaven. Here lies the body of our Lord, 1479. Inside the tabernacle is a small ciborium in cast and chiseled silver with a golden cup. These are the remains of an ancient Roman calidarium, an antique indoor heating system which leads us to the Marian era. This area documents one of the most deeply rooted sources of devotion in the Turin diocese, the Virgin Mary, mother of Jesus and protectoress of all humanity. The works of art exhibited here testify to the evolution of the image and worship of the Virgin Mary in Christian iconography. A late 17th century Madonna in Carrara marble, a 14th century Madonna in polychrome wood, a late 17th century Madonna and child in gilded polychrome wood, remarkable for her delicate features. The Madonna of the Pomegranate, symbol of the bitter sweetness of the lives of Christ and Mary, is a work by the Pisa School in white marble, dating to the mid-15th century, originally probably in polychrome. A large canvas from the second half of the 18th century by Vittorio Amadeo Rapus depicts the Annunciation. A magnificent work of art, thanks to the loveliness of the Virgin Mary's face and the delicate clothing of the angel. A fresco dating back to the second half of the 15th century depicts an enthroned Madonna, tenderly holding her son in a flowered garden. Also on display are a few ex voto or votive offering specimens. This type of painting is a form of popular art that stemmed from the desire to remember the grace received, to be grateful and to fulfill the taken vow. At the bottom of this area is an altar with an oval in the center with the Virgin Mary's face, painted by Claudio Francesco Beaumont in 1750. Surrounding are oil paintings depicting the mysteries of the rosary dating to the second half of the 18th century and attributed to Ignazio Nepote. Covering the altar is a frontal cloth painted with an Annunciation theme. Particularly precious is a sculpture of the Virgin Mary. According to some critics, this work of art with its Ottonian influence should date back to the beginning of the 11th century and probably belong to an ecclesiastical complex demolished in the 15th century to make way for the new cathedral. However, according to other critics, this sculpture should be a work of the school of Benedetto Antelami, datable to the 13th century. Behind the altar, an oil painting depicts a Madonna with child, Saint Anthony of Padua and Saint Elizabeth of Hungary. Through a narrow corridor on the right are visible the archaeological excavations of the Church of the Saviour, as well as the area underneath the cathedral square. The area where the lower cathedral rose was used up to the end of the 15th century as a graveyard for members of the local congregation. And under the many layers of tombs, the remains of ancient Roman buildings were found, as well as the large foundations of a monumental entrance to the complex made up by the three medieval basilicas dating between the 5th and 6th century. The graveyard area leads to the art gallery, where works of art from the 15th to 18th century are displayed. These originally adorned the altars of many churches in the Turin diocese. Among these works are paintings by Pietro Francesco Guala, Legnanino, Morazzone, Giovanni Antonio Mari, Battista Crozio, Melchiore Gerardini, Osla Caccia, the daughter of Guglielmo Caccia, known as Moncalvo, all of whom worked in Turin and around Piedmont in these centuries.
Two tempera paintings are also on display. One depicts St. Lawrence with the grill in his hands, dressed in splendid velvet clothes and is the work of an unknown early 16th century Piedmont painter. The other depicts St. Biagio, represented with a carder's comb in his hands and spectacles for reading the Holy Scriptures. This is a mid-15th century painting, attributed to Guglielmo Fantini, probably once part of a polyptych. The Second Vatican Council, addressing artists, said, The world we live in needs beauty so as not to lapse into desperation. Beauty, like truth, puts joy into the heart of men and is a precious fruit that resists the wear and tear of time, uniting generations and creating communication out of admiration. The Diocesan Museum of Turin wants to contribute to the preservation and promotion of this beauty because, as Pope Benedict XVI wisely observed, Works of art nourish a taste for beauty in those who look at them and the amazement of the mystery of God. Mm -hmm. 